the best approach to image making in design. We're going to take a brief look at some image making techniques and the difference between connotative and denotative approaches when picking your design direction and also see if there's a clear winner between these two. Hello, I am here for Cremello, where we create the most breathtaking eye candy designs in the Milky Way galaxy. Sometimes I like to create videos that go a little deeper into art and design than just software instructions, but you could find some of that here as well. Many graphic design practices involve image making, and these images often work as literal depictions. We refer to these as denotative pictures. Let's say, for example, I wanted to create an image of a banana. It may seem straightforward, yet the way a banana is shown on my design may convey a lot to the viewer. The method employed to create the image of my chosen object and the image's aesthetics can both reveal a lot about the actual object. The banana can be represented as a ready-to-be-eaten, half-peeled banana, a bunch or hand of bananas, or just a rotting peel. Each of these images brings out some different kind of feeling or emotion in the viewer. Just by using photography, the real object can be made to appear either beautiful and desirable or decayed and repulsive. So, the process used in creating the image becomes crucial. In the case of an illustration or where some other design technique is employed, this only increases as the designer is adding extra layers of information and communicating that information to the viewer. Difference between denotative and connotative approaches The denotative meaning of an object is its main meaning not including the feelings and ideas that people may connect with that image or object. The created image conveys information about the actual object including the type of banana it is. The choice of how to represent it might make the difference between whether you desire that object or not. If you want to eat that banana or not, it gets more complicated as you begin to change that denotative or archetypal image and pair it with other elements. By a conscious choice of different techniques employed and pairing different objects, we soon begin to talk about the connotative meaning of an object in our example, a banana, you can see that it can be made funny, be used to represent a particular item in a game or represent the fruit in its raw state only by changing the color. The possibilities and combinations are endless. When designers and artists do this, the banana is no longer just a fruit, it can represent or suggest a totally different idea. If we put it the next to someone's ear, it can be read as a phone. Put a face on it and you give it some personality. This one particular banana is a known meme. And it has a face. And it is a phone. This one is from a game, like I mentioned before. A banana peel looking like this often indicate that something is slippery. Careful not to step on it. This one was sold for $120,000. And a lot of companies and designers use this artwork to comment and add their own twist to it. So, in short, there are two ways to describe, interpret, or attribute the significance of an image, one that takes them objectively, and another that takes them metaphorically. Denotation refers to the first method, while connotation to the second. Images and objects in design and arts are used as both literal and metaphorical representations, Images with denotative and connotative meaning. So keep in mind that it's not always about drawing the prettiest or flashiest representation of an object. For example, if your goal is just to draw attention to your brand and make people talk about it, we can currently see an increase in a trend called anti-design, which, from what I see, is a break from the beauty standard that has dominated social networks like Instagram for so long. Graphic design is not always about perfection. Often, it's about doing the unexpected and creating a contrast in people's expectations. Breaking patterns creates a contrast that draws attention. A big portion of denotation is an attempt to convey the image's essence. Attempting to reduce it to its essential communicative worth, this is a crucial talent for designers to possess. When creating a design piece, there's no right or wrong choice. When you create a denotative image of an object, it accurately represents the original. Your rendering is a true portrayal of that thing. There is no other connotation associated with it. It is what it is. 
Knowing when to use each of these approaches is one of the many jobs a designer has that can be only be achieved with practice. It would be difficult for a viewer to interpret this image as conveying anything other than the idea that it represents a bottle. Let's change that for another object now and see what happens. It would be difficult for a viewer to interpret this image as conveying anything other than the idea that it represents an apple. Except in the context of this video, where it would actually be harder to some people to not think about the apple, given the fact that the audience is watching this video on a computer or on an iPhone. The positioning of the camera. These are some of the things that a designer has to consider when working. When you want to make an image of an object, a denotative image that is, the first thing that you have to really think about is, what is the essence of that object? How do we recognize this image? Well, it's partly the shape. It's partly the color, the texture, it might be the proportions of it, and it might be that it has certain elements that help us recognize that it's a banana and not something else. It's important to understand that a single object can exist in many different states and still communicate itself. And we can break that image or object down to smaller segments and it'd still be recognizable as a banana. If you think of yourself as a camera, you can move all around the object and see it from different angles. So the banana in real life can exist in many forms or states, but banana as a representation, as an image, also exists in a lot of different states, but we have to make that. We have to communicate that to an audience, and we're making marks here as designers and illustrators. How am I gonna make a mark on a piece of paper that's gonna communicate that to an audience? Is this supposed to represent a duck or a banana? It's hard to discern because some of the features we see could be either the fruit or the animal. So we're left confused, and what we find puzzling about this image might just be that one small dot or the position and perspective used when taking the photo. This appears to be intentional in this case, but if it isn't, the ambiguity can be a negative. A key aspect of a designer's duty is to regulate messages that might seem unclear when we don't expect them, as well as visual cues that might suggest different meanings, and ensure they mean what you intended from the start. When we want to make our own images instead of using stock photo to represent an object using a denotative image, we also have to take into account the kind of form that we're using to make that image. So here's a fairly denotative view of the banana. It is a hastily created, very basic line drawing made on paper that does not employ color or volume. We can tell that the picture is shaped like a banana because of its outline. Therefore, even if these essential components of form representation are missing, we may still understand the message and that it's a banana. You could give that fruit more volume and dimension. Simply using black and white and a few basic shading techniques results in a lot more information being conveyed here. We understand it's a banana, but it's still a denotative image. Nothing more or less than a banana, but the image starts to show a lot more features. And by incorporating color into the image, we might apply a similar technique and provide much more details. So the image eventually progressed from having very little information contained in the denotative form, in other words, the way we generated the image, to having a lot more information held in the form. And the amount of visual information directly related to how photorealistic or iconic an image is. Returning to the banana line sketch from earlier, we can look at this as being very simplistic image. Whereas our colored pencil drawing image is far more realistic. These two pictures have one thing in common, they're both denotative pictures. One is quite basic and has little data, whereas the other contains far more information and depth. Which technique will be applied to create that image is one of the things the designer gets to choose. Since images can be created in a variety of ways and still have meaning. In other words, the representation of an object can be created in any way, whether it minimum, maximal, expressive, or abstract, as long as it can be understood to represent that specific object. There will be instances when you need a really sophisticated graphic, maybe a really decorative picture, and there will be other situations where you want a straightforward, iconic image. 
Let's say it's for an identity or brand logo, something that, for example, needs to be read and understood fast. Because of this, it's critical for designers to possess a wide range of knowledge and techniques available to them. Since visual language functions as a reflection of our thoughts and our individual and communal emotions, both are complementary and typically do not exist apart. Keep in mind that connotation is not permitted in communications or visuals that have an official tone or that must adhere to formal specifications. This could cause various misunderstandings about the information that needs to be conveyed. Connotation is more suggestive than denotation, which is unquestionably more descriptive. Connotative messages are typically more engaging and innovative in this way since they are full of meaning and appeal to the receiver's empathy and interpretation. They have the capacity to persuade and even seduce. In order to use denotation and connotation to encode meaningful imagery, designers must be familiar with the audience's language, both visual and linguistic, but there's no clear winner when picking an approach. Like shown in that delicious ripe banana versus the rotten banana peel example, words and images that we use also have a charge to them, much like how visuals might appear as positive or negative. Some of the words we use are neutral, but most of them have a color to them, and when people hear or see associations with them, it will affect and influence how they feel. The denotative approach, which is the exact, literal definition you'd anticipate finding in a dictionary, is considerably different from that. Now, because every event is a little different, there is no way to predict in advance what strategy or images you should use. My question of the day is, what are your thoughts on connotative versus denotative? Which one do you prefer to use? If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe or, if you're not fully convinced, give it a like before going on your way. That helps me a lot. See you next time.